Like other organizations with a requirement to be operationally ready at a moment's notice, military personnel must be able to complete their assigned tasks safely and effectively. But more so than any other type of organization, militaries like the SAF must also stress discipline and hierarchy. This enables the organization and its members to become a lethal fighting force that can call upon a whole suite of weapons to kill the enemy and those who seek to do Singapore harm. To reach such a level of proficiency, training has to be tough and realistic. But tough training and tough and realistic training must strike a balance between discipline, hierarchy, risk management and safety so as to prepare the SAF to be operationally ready for different and difficult circumstances. As much as I support the safety review currently being undertaken by the SAF, it must not lead to a public perception that the SAF has gone soft. While requirements, expectations and the training methodology must adjust to each generation of NS men and the equipment they operate, the SAF must be mindful not to swing to an extreme where realistic training is compromised. In this regard, the public response to the death of Corporal Pang has been far from one way dominated by doubts cast over MINDEF and the necessity of national service. It has also prompted a significant counter-perspective, one that is shared by many NS men, including amongst those who are currently fulfilling or have completed their NS requirements and commitments. They asked, in spite of the training incidents that occur from time to time, can Singaporeans envision a safe and secure Singapore without operationally ready NS men and an operationally ready SAF? On the latter point, the recent bilateral spat between Singapore and Malaysia was raised as an example of the possibilities that could be imposed upon Singapore, if not for the strong SAF that any potential adversary has to contend with. Many online commentators focused on the Mahate factor as a reason why the sharp deterrent edge of the SAF represents a central pillar for our existence as a sovereign nation. However, the need for a strong SAF is not personality specific, or for a particular moment in time. It is in fact far more fundamental. The key determinant that necessitates a strong SCF is founded in our geopolitical realities. We are a small country of under six million, surrounded by much larger neighbors in ASEAN, where our two closest neighbors in particular are represented by about 300 million people combined. Putting race, religion, and other fault lines aside, we live in a world where larger countries are wont to lord over the small and powerless throwing laws and legal norms out of the window, particularly when there is no real price to pay for doing so. Combine this with Singapore's peculiar circumstances, chief of which is that we are geographically very small, the need for a capable and resolute SAF becomes abundantly clear, regardless who our neighbours are. In such a context, Singapore's need for a strong, operationally ready deterrent force that means business and can promise and deliver a bloody nose on any adversary becomes not just acute, but critical. The public must never forget that the institution of national service which underpins a strong SAF stands at the delivery end of that promise. <clears throat>